morning and a happy Sabbath, each one of you. I am so glad to uh, welcome you to the Suya Seventh Adventist Church. And this morning, for those of you that are watching live via the internet, uh, I think last week we're up and going, and again then today. So we want to welcome you for uh, joining us this morning. Uh, today, um, I wanted to uh, point out to uh, my brother, Brad, who has taken a, a, a role in leadership in our church here that the Suya Seventh Adventist Church has upgraded our flooring here. And uh, we're very proud of our new flooring and uh, we're very happy that uh, we have it. We have a few more things that we're doing and uh, we have the, uh, a new piano for us is new and so we're so happy to have that. I also have a few relatives. Uh, one came all the way from Germany this morning just to be here. Welcome, Cindy. We, I just want to embarrass you for a minute. So happy that you've chosen to be here. And I have uh, my cousin Bev for, that uh, went to California and came back again. And uh, I'm glad and my cousin Sue and uh, uh, we, uh, and, and my kind of adopted sister Paula is here, so we're glad that uh, I have a whole row of, of relatives is what I'm trying to say, and my lovely sister-in-law too. Sorry, I, I almost missed you, Candace, there on that line. And, and my favorite sister too is on that same pew, so <laughs> one and only sister. Um, and for those of you that are visiting, I understand that some of you have come a long ways for, uh, to be here today. We want to again extend a welcome to you and uh, say, that um, today is, is it's always good to be in the house of the Lord, and especially to be able to do that with his friends on his day is a good thing. In a minute's time, I'm going to ask for your prayer requests, but before we get there, uh, there's a couple of things in your bulletin uh, that I'd like you to take a look at, and some of it is on, um, on the screen. Uh, for those of you that are looking for work, there's a work opportunity there. Uh, for those of you that like running, there is a running opportunity at the BC camp meeting. And uh, of course, our August uh, 19th camp meeting is coming together here in Oliver. Um, we won't be running there. We'll just be, we'll have a walk, but we will be running. <laughs> but if you want to run, uh, go to the BC camp meeting here. Um, I don't think there's much prize money involved, but um, you're, <laughs> you'll have a good time. And. Uh, uh, again, we want to um, uh, encourage you to uh, be there if you can. Um, there is this, um, you know, Brad, I'm going to put you on the spot here. As I feel very comfortable with doing that, by the way. Um, there is this discussion here in our bulletin regarding our new church magazine. And I know you've mentioned something. This is going online. Do you have any thoughts on that? Or do you just want me to uh, make a, a story? <laughs> I mean, for British Columbia and the Yukon, uh, that particular area has been served by that magazine called Reach. Uh, we're changing the name, but essentially the same purpose. Mm. Uh, we're changing the format. Instead of eight and a half by 11, it is, uh, a, well, approximately half that size. Uh, and uh, it is available, of course, in a uh, digital format, a flip book, as it's called. You can go online here and uh, you can just flip the pages as you want electronically. And so it's, um, the, the hard copy is going to be coming here to all of the churches in British mm. Columbia. Uh, it's printed on a, a slightly glossier type of, of paper and it's available in both uh, the digital format as well as in the uh, uh, paper hard copy format. Okay. So we're hoping that this magazine will bring together even a lot more of the news, etc., of our of our whole region, and we invite your ideas and suggestions and reports and all those kind of things. So it's kind of coming out at the same time as camp meeting, but it's a uh, it's part of the ongoing process of the conference. It's called Together. Together, and the subtitle is Together in Mission. So I am particularly intrigued by what is taking place in different parts of the world. We're gonna have a quick clip on that. Following that, we're gonna be able to sing some wonderful music together. The Bay of Couture is dotted with churches, beaches, and fortified towns. Visitors flock to these towns to enjoy nice weather year round. In fact, 
The country of Montenegro hosts almost triple the amount of visitors than its own population each year. Along the coastline in the town of Zelenica, the Adventist Church has operated a summer camp for many years. Ilya was one of the first Adventists to pioneer this area. He remembers the challenges of the early days. The work was organized here. It started somewhere in the 40s of the last century. The work was met with great resistance by the communist government, which then, immediately after the Second World War, operated in these areas. So the brothers and sisters who gathered in the houses had a lot of problems. They were forbidden to gather. When the laws loosened a bit and the people relaxed a bit, religious services were held in homes and had to be reported. Eventually, the church bought this building here. After only one Friday night service, the property was confiscated and held by local authorities. Adventist leaders found another property where they started youth camps in the summer, a risky move at a time when it wasn't allowed. Danilo, who is now the local pastor in Zelenica, remembers attending the camps as a kid and the influence they had on his decision to live a life of ministry. On this field, uh, like 28 years ago, started youth camps. There are a bunch of tents around, a uh, place for worship, singing, and studying Bible together. For a number of years, this was the, the place where youth camps held. Almost 35 years later, the church managed to regain ownership of their original property. So when communism was overthrown, it was a change of government here in Montenegro. And not long after that, we got back this building that was taken from us. The existing building on the property has been a venue where youth and children's summer camps and mission camps have been organized for decades. This is where many youth have given their hearts to Jesus and been baptized in the nearby sea. But the building, being almost 90 years old, is rapidly deteriorating. It has been patched many times over the years, but has now reached a state beyond restoration. Considering updated health and safety standards, tearing down the existing building and creating a new structure is the best option. This quarter, a portion of your 13th Sabbath offering will help restore this property. As a people of vision, we are looking forward and we are praying for the new building which can serve not only in this area, but youth and adult all over our union and our division all year around. In addition to continuing youth camps, the new structure can be rented to outside groups to provide funds to make it self-sufficient. Adventists want to transform it into a center of influence where they can meet the needs of their community. Please pray for this project in Montenegro. Pray that these plans will touch the hearts of this community. Thank you for supporting 13 Sabbath offering projects like this. Now that Mission Spotlight was a powerful story. I can't imagine losing control of a church and then getting it back 30 some years later. Um, there's work to be done, so I hope we continue to pray for our friends in Montenegro. Um, but I am so glad that they have this powerful story, this powerful story they can share with us. And now is the time, of course, that we get to sing together, and I'm so happy to see some new fresh voices that can sing along with us. And we open our hymnals today for our first song, number 625, Higher Ground.
that's our prayer for each one of us this morning. Our next song is going to be Hymn 86, How Great Thou Art. I'd like to say that was a test, but that was just an error, and I'm glad you adapted well. I could hear you all singing, and I'm sure it's one we've sung very, very many times, so we know it mostly by memory. I'm grateful I can say I do. I don't know many, but that's one that I definitely know by heart most of the time. <laughs> and now we turn back to number 524, where we will sing, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Trust him. 
please stand with us as we sing our opening song. That is hymn 559. Now, now thank, thank we all our God. your Bibles with you this morning, and if you have, I invite you to took, uh, take a look at the book of Psalms, Psalms 100. Betty's going to share that with us this morning. Uh, David, who is author of the book of Psalms, went through some rather dramatic and uh, a lot of calamity in his life, and yet he wrote some amazing insights, and this morning we have a chance to hear what the whole book, our whole um, uh, chapter of Psalms 100 is. Good morning. When I was asked to read this, my first um, thought was, this was one of the texts that my mom taught me to, to say. And, you know, I don't have my mom with me anymore, but um, it was nice to kind of have that kind of memory for, um, for a few minutes. Um, my mom, I must say, when I think of who a Christian is, I always, like, like I don't have any of her, her qualities, but she was the most Christian person I've ever met. And um, so it was nice to me to just kind of have those thoughts. So I'm reading from the New King James Version, Psalms 100. I don't know if I even need my glasses. And you can recite it with me. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Thank you for sharing that beautiful scripture. Brad, the time is yours. I want to welcome those of you who might be visiting today, uh, all the way from Florida land and the like. We're glad you're here. And uh, Paula, we're glad you're here. And to my cousins, yes, my cousins, we're glad that you're here as well. So uh, that is something very special. Um, 
I, I want to share a little a bit of an update on, on some things that you might be interested. First of all, I want to encourage you to remember our camp meeting that is coming up three weeks from now. And uh, that is a big event. Four years we've not had camp meeting because of COVID and the like, but now we can meet and uh, we're planning to have a very special program. Uh, one of the things that uh, will be of interest to you is goes along with what uh, Pastor Dirk was sharing about our world budget. Um, one of the treasures of our world church is uh, a gentleman who is going to be there with us. He is a uh, a wonderful spiritual speaker in and of himself, but he's going to be having a presentation called Follow the Money. And we often hear that expression in business. If you want to find out where influence is found, follow the money. Well, uh, he's going to be sharing how uh, the world budget is broken down and how the monies that you and I give go to fulfill the global mission as well as the local mission that uh, God has entrusted. So that'll be something very special. Then I was very, very, very happy that um, to walk in here this morning and to see the, the redecoration of the church. I've heard the rumors that this is going to happen. And for all who are involved with this, congratulations. This is very, very nice and it's update that uh, needed to be made. And I'm just grateful for everybody's hard work to make it happen. I even see a little bit of paper that has to cover something over up here it has to come off yet. And uh, so it's a, a work in progress, but it's a great progress. <laughs> Thank you for that. Now, there's something else, too, that, uh, that I want to share with you that has special application for our South Okanagan. Some of you uh, know Gary Klein, Gary and Sherry Klein, and their one of their daughters is Rhoda Klein Miller. She is the pastor of our Oak Ridge uh, Adventist Church, which used to be called the uh, Vancouver Central Church. It's our, it's our large congregation uh, located in the Oak Ridge neighborhood now. Uh, and uh, this coming Sabbath, one week from today, I'm going to have the privilege of all leading out in her commissioning service which is a very special service uh, recognizing her spiritual gifts and uh, the role that God is using her in in a very special way. So when uh, uh, Dr. Alfred came in this morning, uh, I said, you've got an appointment next uh, Saturday. He looked at me with a blank look in his eyes and said, what, what, uh, what appointment? So I had to tease him a little bit, but next Sabbath, I'm counting on you and Anna being there in Vancouver for Rhoda's, uh, Rhoda's commissioning. That is uh, something very, very special. So you can look forward to that. Today, uh, one of the things that you've already heard about, and I want to mention again, is that we're here as a family, the Thorpe Clatt family and many others who were invited to it, for a special celebration for birthdays. And uh, Aunt Anna... I want to commend you on 90 rotations around the sun. Uh, you've done a great job. And uh, along with that, we have another aunt who is not here physically this, this morning in, in the Asuyas Church, but she is with us, and that is my Aunt Doreen. And uh, in the Clatt family, there was uh, seven, seven siblings. My mother was the oldest, and... Now, is it Doreen is the youngest, or is it Bill? It was, it was Doreen was the youngest. Uh, Bev's, uh, Bev's dad was the second youngest, etc. Well, uh, uh, you know how life goes on and people get separated. You don't see people very often. So it so happens that uh, Auntie Doreen is also turning 90, or has turned 90, and so... These two uh, ladies were in a special way as a Thorpe Clatt family gathering together uh, this afternoon, tomorrow, and celebrating that occasion. And 90 years is quite the accomplishment. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that uh, celebration, especially this afternoon. You know, I have to admit, uh, my Aunt Anna was one of the ones that did her best to try and raise me. <laughs> and I remember very, many very happy occasions I, uh, where we as, as family met together. I have a, a brief memory of Auntie Anna 
before she and my Uncle Harry were married. Now that tells you just how far back my gray hair stands for. Uh, and uh, so, uh, yeah, we could uh, go back on family memories and, and I thank the Lord for the blessings that he has given in this regard. Birthdays are a time for celebration. They're a time of joy. And I want to talk about celebration and joy in the life of a Christian. I want to take just a few moments, and in a few minutes, I want to share five reasons, five reasons why we, as followers of Jesus, can have joy in our hearts. I invite you to take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Philippians. It may be of interest to you that the book of Philippians, the major theme in Philippians, is the whole theme of rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. And I invite you to turn with me to Philippians chapter 4. And um, let's look here at verse 3 and 3 through 6, okay? 3 through 6. I urge you there, I urge you also, uh, Philippians chapter 4, starting in verse 3. I urge you also, true companion, help those ladies, those women who labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Whose names are in the book of life. Now, the Bible here is telling us that God has a record. Uh, whether it's a digital book or a paper, the point is that there is a record of those individuals whose names are in the book of life. Now, friends, let's remember that as the framework of the whole concept of rejoicing. We have the experience of being in Jesus. Now, notice verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord how often? Rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now, turn back with me uh, to chapter 1. Chapter 1. Just want to pick up the context here of how Paul is writing. Uh, we're looking here at Philippians chapter 1. And uh, verse 12 I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel, so that it became evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. The Apostle Paul was writing this while he was a prisoner in Rome. I've had the privilege of being in the city of Rome, going to the ancient ruins of, the, of this area, to the prison where Paul was actually in prison. Uh, for some years, or so many months I should say, in his uh, journey, he was under house arrest. But finally, as his day of, of, uh, of trial came closer and closer, it tells us that he was in the Mamertine prison. And it was a very unusual prison in the city of Rome. It was actually like you'd call a deep, uh, a big cellar. It was a hole in the ground that goes up. I've actually been down inside of it, and there's this hole about roughly uh, three feet in diameter at the top. The only way in and out is down through that hole. And so it was a very, very secure place because there was no windows, no way of possibly getting out. And here is the Apostle Paul. He spent some time in that particular prison. And we know that he ultimately became a martyr for Jesus when he was beheaded. And it is in this context, as a prisoner, of all the things where he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. Now, friends, let's be very realistic. Brutally, sometimes life is not fair. And it is horrible. Uh, Paula, I know the a little of the journey that you and your family are going through. We think of the uh, Margie, um, a precious friend to us as a, as a congregation. Um, some months ago, it was said that she was clear of her cancer, and it has come back with a vengeance, and humanly speaking, it will be a very short time before she passes. Um, I would, Candace and I visited with her yesterday. 
a tragic, horrible situation. We pray that God will restore her and Aaron and others to health, etc. But in the midst of that kind of suffering, even with the Apostle Paul, Paul says, rejoice. Now the rejoicing and the joy that the Apostle Paul and the Bible is speaking about is not the giddy happiness that you would happen to see uh, by uh, going to some, some carnival. Uh, this last Sabbath, I had the privilege of being in McBride for the 80th anniversary of the McBride Church. Then we went over to Edmonton. I picked up Candace. Uh, she flew in, and then we went down to Berman University, our university here in Canada. Uh, two and a half days of uh, meetings with uh, the pastors from all across Canada. First time in 12 years that we've been able to bring all of the pastors across Canada together. Had a wonderful time of fellowship as well as studying and, uh, and uh, professional continuing education. I went, to, uh, we stayed with uh, Pastor Brian and Karen Hawes. Some of you know the Hawes, uh, Pastor Hawes. He was the pastor of the Rutland Church for a number of years. In Pinocchio, when we got there, it was the last day of the Pinocchio Rodeo. And the place was packed out and there was this big carnival going on. The happiness, the joy, the rejoicing is that the Bible is speaking about is not the kind that you get by going to a dance or to a nightclub or to a carnival, etc. There is rather a joy that the Bible speaks of that is far deeper than that. That is an, a, it is the keel. It is the, it is the weight that holds the boat upright in the middle of the storms that, of life. Five reasons why you and I can have joy in our lives. Please take your Bibles and turn with me to Revelation chapter 4. Last book of the Bible, Revelation chapter 4. And we want to look here at uh, reason number one, why you and I can rejoice in the uh, blessings that God has given to us. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Here the angels are describing the worship that is given to uh, our Heavenly Father and to Jesus. It says, Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Okay, glory, honor, and power are three attributes of what it means to praise and worship God. It's one of the things that has happened here this morning in our experience. Why? Why is God uh, worthy to receive glory, honor, and power? For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Reason number one is that we are the special creation of God. Sometime in past eternity, not sometime, but in eternity past, God looked forward in time and he saw this planet, he saw us, and as we've studied in the book of Ephesians this morning, in our Sabbath school, God foresaw and he created us. It says, by your will, they exist and were created. So, two things. Number one, we are created by God and by his will we exist. In other words, every breath we take, the food we eat, the blessings that we enjoy are because by your will they exist. Now that should help us to take the wobble out of life. When we face the challenges of life, we know our, there is a God who sustains us and who has foreseen us and who knows the future. By your will, they were created. By their will, you exist. The life that we have and the sustenance that we enjoy are by the blessing and the will of God. So I'd like to suggest this morning that we are not random little pieces of material floating around in the universe. We're not just a, a piece of flotsam on the ocean that is blown back and forth by the wind, but rather God has a plan for our hearts and lives and he has created us. And so whether you are early in the conveyor belt of this life, or elderly and coming down near the end of life here and now, God has a plan for our lives. There is a purpose for our beings, and he sustains us. He is with us. 
He cares for us. Reason number one. Reason number two. We turn with please to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, we want to look here at the second reason that we can rejoice and have joy in our hearts. We can celebrate much more than just a 90th birthday celebration, although that is certainly important and beautiful. But there is a reason for us to celebrate our daily lives. Romans chapter 1, and here the Apostle Paul is writing. I want us to notice here, uh, it says in verse 20, well, verse 19, because what may be known of God, Romans chapter 1, verse 19 and 20, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that all are without excuse. God presents to us evidence all around us of his power and of the fact that he has created us. And unfortunately, human beings being what we are, we often miss the evidence because it is so common. I heard it expressed this way the other day. It says, the last animal to discover water are fish. The last animals to discover water are fish. Why? Because they're in it all the time. And look around us just for a second of the incredible beauty in the Okanagan and the Asuyas and yes, the Oliver area. Somebody here was uh, kind of differentiating this morning. The, the, di the evidence that is all around us, you take the hue of colors. There's no need for us to have color simply to live. There's no reason for us to have scent in the flowers. There's no reason for the four distinct seasons that we experience here in the South Okanagan. There's no real reason why we have to have the, the, uh, the I love the desert. And you know, you sit down here uh, every time I go down to Haynes Point and you see the sun changing and it's no excuse me as the earth changes its position uh, in reference to the sun and you see the shadows that change on the on the mountains and all of the vegetation we see all of these things all around us they are evidence evidence they, it's the water if you please that we live in all the time there is incredible beauty incredible design there is purpose and meaning in the ecology of how our world works together that shows us that there is a God who loves and cares for us God is a lover of the beautiful and I rejoice in that beauty uh, as I just shared a few moments ago we were at uh, Berman and Wednesday noon about we finished the meetings and it's time to head home well uh, we, uh, I've never been through Rocky Mountain House. Uh, years ago as a student, I went to the biology station that was operating at that time in the, in the mountains. And the highway uh, through from Rocky Mountain House on through to the Glacier uh, Free Parkway wasn't in existence. And I wanted to go through and see the beauty of that. Well, it was a gorgeous day. Some of you have gone through that route, I'm sure, many times. There's now a big dam, big lake, uh, etc. And the majesty of the mountains, you come through that route and you go down the glacier highways and you see these high mountains and the glaciers and the, and the, the turquoise color of the lakes. And you come on out there to Lake Louise. And we went up to Lake Louise along with about 10,000 other people, it seemed like. And you see the, that lake nestled in among those big mountains and the glaciers, etc. Wow, what beauty it is. And then you come along through, uh, down through to Golden and, and on through to Revelstoke. The magnificence of those mountains and the vegetation, everything is so lush and green at this time of year. And you see the vivid contrasts of, of all these incredible colors. And then you come down through to Sycamuse and we stopped at the Dutchman Dairy and got some ice cream. Oh my. What a privilege it is to enjoy ice cream. Now, I'm going to make you all hungry for lunch, <laughs> etc. So, why do we have taste buds that can enjoy and the capacity to smell and enjoy all of these different things? Because God wants us to enjoy these blessings. 
And I just hope and pray that none of us will be the kind of fish that don't recognize the water that is all around us. The evidence of God's graciousness and goodness to us is incredible. Then I'd like to suggest uh, reason number three, why we can have joy and happiness in our life, is for the reality of Jesus and his incarnation to this world. Turn with me, please, to Matthew chapter 1. All four of the Gospels tell the story of Jesus coming to this earth, but I'd like to turn, please, to Matthew chapter 1. And, uh, of course, Matthew opens up with the, uh, with the uh, genealogy of, of Christ, but we notice here uh, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 and on, Matthew 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child with the Holy Spirit. As in the Gospel of Luke, it describes, for blessed art thou among women. Mary was specially blessed to be the mother of our Savior. And it says, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was mindful, minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about those things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Friends, the great reason why you and I should rejoice is because God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son that what? Whosoever believeth in him should not perish but should have everlasting life. God has extended to us the greatest gift it could possibly give in himself. Jesus, who is God in the fullest sense, coming down to this earth, why? To save people from their sin. The Bible tells us that you and I, born with phenomenal potential and possibilities, each one of us are gifted in unique, distinct ways, but with all our giftedness and with all of the potential, we need a Savior. We are fallen and corrupt, and without heaven's blessings without Jesus we are lost and here it says he shall save his people from their sin and I will not take the time to recount all the different aspects of the ministry of Jesus Christ but he came as an ordinary peasant as a tradesman a carpenter he lived he worked as we do facing the same temptations and difficulties that we face he taught he healed why to reveal what the Father, what God is like. The character of God is revealed in Jesus Christ. And then he came down to the last days of his life and there on the cross he died in our behalf. He took my place. He took your place. He is our substitute, our Savior. Unto you this day is born a Savior, the Gospel of Luke records. And his, he shall save his people from their sin. I... The third reason I suggest that we can have joy in our hearts, where we can celebrate and rejoice, is because there is a Savior. And going beyond that, friend, is the evidence that has been given in history and in the Bible about the resurrection of Jesus. It's not just the fact that he came and lived and died, but that he was resurrected and that there is solid historical Evidence that he experienced all those things and this separates and differentiates him from all other teachers or individuals in this world. We can rejoice because we have salvation through Jesus Christ. Going on now, please, to Luke chapter 10. I want to look at, at uh, the fourth reason why we can have uh, joy and salvation in our hearts. Luke chapter 10. And uh, the, what I want us to notice here is the contrast. Luke chapter 10, and we want to notice here verse 20. Now, first of all, let me give you a little bit of the context and the background here. Jesus had sent the disciples out two by two, 
to preach and to teach. Uh, he set up the buddy system, if you want to call it that way, so that people could uh, be encouraged as they're sharing the gospel because, practically speaking, relatively few people are interested in salvation. And uh, he sent them out. Well, and he gave them power over the demons to uh, heal and to teach, etc. So they went out, and, but now they came back. And I want you to uh, notice here verse 17. I want you to notice particularly verse 20, but you need to see the contrast. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons were, are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Satan claims to be the prince of this world. And Jesus saw in the preaching, the teaching, of the disciples, the conquest of the kingdom of Satan. And he says, I see Satan's dominion being destroyed. Now verse 20. Behold, I give, you a, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall, be by, shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, and this is what I want you to notice, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written where? In heaven. Remember what uh, we first read in Philippians with uh, the list of those peoples whose names are written in the book of life. Friend, when you and I give our hearts and lives totally to Jesus and we surrender to him, <laughs> our names are written where? In heaven. Uh, can you imagine what that means, friends? There is security in Jesus. Security. Our names are written in heaven. And Jesus has verified by his life, his death, that our names are secure in heaven. And I want to suggest to you this morning that one of the great reasons why you and I can rejoice and be glad is because our names are written where? Up in heaven, we are secure in Jesus. So we have our salvation secured in him. Then our fifth reason why we should rejoice this morning is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I'd like to suggest to you it is the reason of the second coming of Jesus Christ and how we have hope in Jesus of the resurrection, and of eternal life at that time. Now, we have eternal life now. Our names are written in heaven. But there's a time when some people maybe will nap, will sleep for a little while. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13, a verse that I'm sure you've heard many times. I, verse 13, I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. The Bible describes death as a sleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Reason number five why you and I can have a joy that is profound and deep in our hearts and lives is the hope of Jesus' second coming and all that is associated with that. The Bible here identifies what will happen to those who have died trusting in Jesus. We have the promise of eternal life. And not only a life that is restored and perfect and bodies that are perfect and there will be no more cancer, sickness, suffering and death, no more accidents, but there is eternal life. Eternal life. And with that hope that God presents to us, you and I can look past and beyond the traumas of our daily life. Yes, certainly engaged in life. Yes, praying that God's will will be done to restore, to help, to heal, all those things. But my friends, from the Christian perspective, we're not just a speck of Adam 
or atomic particles floating around in this world or go back into the universe at the time of death, but rather that throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity, we have the hope of being together with God's people and throughout eternity enjoying the blessings of being reunited with our loved ones and our family and the hope of eternity. Eternal, eternal, not just temporary, but eternal life and the development of every capacity that God has given to us. I don't know about you, friend, but <laughs> there's so many things that I would like to explore and learn and do. I see some of you nodding your head in that. You say, wow, I'd love to be a musician and I, all the other things. I'd love to be a, an artist to paint. I'd love to do this. I'd love to do that. And the three score and ten that is given to us here on this earth typically is way too short, way too short. But throughout us, the ceaseless ages of eternity to be able to exist and to develop and grow, expand all of the wonderful blessings that God has entrusted to us. Friends, God wants us to rejoice. He wants us to celebrate. And when the challenges of our life come along, we need that that keel, that anchor to our hearts and lives, that assurance that my life is not just what is happening here and now. It's not just the successes that happen now. It is not just the pain that happens now. It is the life beyond. And that is given to us in God's word so that we can be people of hope, of optimism, and joy. So I want to encourage you, celebrate. Celebrate. Life is good. Yes, it's got a lot of pain. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not in any way discounting the difficulties of life. But our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I invite you to take your, your hymnal, please, and turn with me to hymn number 27. Rejoice, you pure in heart. Rejoice. And I, I pray that God will help each of us to be joy filled, celebration filled individuals because of the wonderful hope that God has placed in our hearts. Let's stand to sing here as uh, we go to hymn number 27, Rejoice You Pure in Heart.
this day, this occasion, the opportunity to come together on your holy Sabbath day and praise you and honor you and thank you for the privilege of having joy in our hearts, of being able to celebrate, to look a a look around us and to see the amazing evidences of your watch care, your love, your goodness, of your existence in our world, in our universe, in our lives. Thank you for all of this evidence that you've given to us. And Lord, as we go out to our, our homes, to our work, to our life, Father, there's times when there is an occasions and reasons why we have pain and what we're experiencing. Lord, lift our eyes up. Help us to see beyond the, the challenges and the problems that we face, to see the big picture that you have uh, presented to us. So may our hearts be filled with true joy as we go to our homes. May we share that joy with others. Bless us, prosper us, we humbly ask in Jesus' holy name, amen.